the, the legendary character. I think it's going to be a Jedi Council member, um, or I think it will be Jar Jar. Greetings and hello there, everyone. It's me, your Star Wars dad, and I'm here with the gerbil. Not a gerbil, the absolute gerbil. What's up, sir? Hey, doing pretty good. Enjoying uh, a nice evening at home, but it's an early morning for you. So how are you? I'm fine. I'm, I'm a bit groggy, but we'll be okay. We're having some technical issues with the uh, show this morning. Gerbil can't see me, so if there are some weird cues in here, weird non-visual cues, just be aware that the camera in Discord is not working. Yes, he, and he's doing this again because I had to reboot. And so anyway, we're, we're, it's, it's a fun morning for me here, yeah, in, take uh, two. Yeah, here in Middle America. So... All right, gerbils. So we got this cool little subject. I don't. It's not a wheel. What, what do you call this thing? Bar. Bar beam. Yeah, subject bar maybe. Okay, we're calling it the subject bar. I think we both popped yeah. out bar, so that's what it is. So, um, first topic. Let's just jump right in. GL Leia, and I thought that you had her, but you don't. So, what's up with there? Yeah. Yeah. So you know, I think a lot of people uh, expected her to drop in in October. And I think it, I think she came a little bit quicker than we were expecting, and so. I have uh, Drogon and Scout Trooper at five stars, and I was all prepared to maybe wail out on the last one if she came early. But now that I still need about 160-ish shards on two characters, I'm not quite that comfortable wailing on it. So I'm going to have to wait, it seems, like another maybe three weeks. I'm not too sure. I, d I am using Crystal Cash that I've stored to buy the, the weekly shipments, because, you know, like... I think it's uh, 7,500-ish crystals. You can buy 85 shards each week. So I figure I'll finish Scout that way. And then I may just go ahead and wail out however I can to, to finish Drogon. Because he's the last one, right? Yeah, So and I've got the yeah. screen up right now. It's If you purchase 85 shards a week, it's 6,800 crystals. Okay. Oh, that's um, better than I thought. Yeah, so that's, that's 100 bucks for a full character, basically, I think, if I'm doing math. Somewhere in there. Um, uh, let's but, not do math early. Let's not do math. Yes, it is truly. But yeah, you're right. Drogon is not. You would you would have had to pay the full price. Yeah. Um, so and that makes you know as far as capital games, I know that you know for us it's not nice, but for capital games, if they're gonna launch a, a an easy to farm Galactic Legend, you know, so they're they're paying off the folks that actually invested the full. 300 bucks in the in this mm -hmm. you know unlock method here which i you know you and i are not willing to invest but and, and you might get lucky you know that one one percent of one percent chance that you get lucky but um <laughs> for those who didn't yeah you're, you're looking at 300 bucks to unlock drogan and they're paying those people off for you know maybe a month or so basically yeah and I, I don't hold that against them. I mean, that's what keeps the game going and alive, right? I mean, they're entitled to uh, to making their fair share of profit off of it. I mean, we're all going to still be playing it for another six months, ten years. Who knows? So it's fine. Uh, but it's just it came faster than expected. Um, but I am I do really like the character. I I, I watched um, a number of, of of plays online, like Arnold's stream, of course, where he's you know battle testing against everything. Uh, and, and there's some 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 things that I, I really wish had been a little different in Leia's, not just the team compositions, but a little bit of mm, things that I, I don't like too much about the kit. Um, and, it, and it kind of led me down a rabbit hole. Like when, when I first read the kit, like day one when it dropped and I read it line by line, I actually was... I, my blood pressure was going up, and I realized I was getting really, really angry. And I'm really glad I was traveling on a, on a school trip that week, uh, and I didn't stream and I didn't post anything online, because I had like a, a solid week to kind of digest it and, and back off from it a bit. Because I, I think that it's a great kit, but there are things I don't like. And, and before I go into any of that, what, what are your thoughts? Like, how do you how did you receive GLA a kit? I generally, um, <laughs> I struggle with the kits, man. You know, I think this is why it's good to have me and you on here. I, I'm, I'm a straight line guy, and these kits are, are lots of wavy, intersecting, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, multi-sectional is not the right word. It means something else today. But, um, you know, mm -hmm. I, you know, it's, it's, it's a it's a twenty legged octopus, and all the legs are intertwined with each other and mixed up and tied in knots, and then mm -hmm. they get pulled out and whatever. So, 
I, to me, I can't read these kits and I can't put them together. And I, I they're just so, um, there's just so, yeah, to me, I got to play with it. I got, I got to get out yeah. there and play with her just to, to really make heads or tails of it. I can watch somebody else play too, but that doesn't even do it for me. So I guess I'm really an experiential guy when it comes to that now, you know, and, and I long for the days of not simpler kits, but not so many um if this then this if this then this if this then right. this you know an endless string of uh, i remember basic programming i'm not a programmer but you know back in the early 80s we had basic programming and they taught it to us and if it's a constant if then loop well it just to me it's i i can't resolve it until i actually get it in my hands yeah no and that is that is part of what i really struggled with on, on leia's kit like when i think of Leia Organa from from the original trilogies, right? And of course, Leia's had appearances everywhere in the Star Wars galaxy. But when I think of Leia, I think of her as being um, an aggressive leader, which she obviously is in this kit. But I also think of her as being a recruiter, because like if you just go back to A New Hope, like she literally recruited Old Ben, then uh, you know as Ben goes out with with. Uh, Re, he, you know, he hires Han Solo and Chewbacca, and then he takes farm boy Luke with him. She ends up recruiting all of them to join her cause, and then later she recruits Lando, and then she recruits the Ewoks. I mean, like, she literally was a recruiter, and I didn't get the feeling that any of that charisma and character came out in the kit here. It was, it felt more like Leia was saying, hey, you random soldier guy, I'm going to make you the most powerful character in the galaxy right now. Kill that target. Yeah. Right? And and I think just like Drogon, I think is a really cool character in the game and, I, and I'm happy we have him. But I, I really wish that this kit wasn't so tied to really two characters and was more flexible to recruit in other rebels or light side characters that would have been lore, semi lore accurate. So two characters. Does that make sense? Yeah, R2 and Drogon, right, are the two characters. Right. Not, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. and, and like people. you were saying, the if-thens, like I did this uh, Phoenix review a while back, and, and, and in my assessment, like I didn't like initially Sabine and uh, Zeb in, the, in the, the Captain Rex lineup, and a big part of that is what you were saying, like uh, Zeb has a lot of if-then conditions, right? If they're stunned, if they're this, if they're that. And I feel like GLA is kind of that on steroids, right? If the target is an attacker, if they're a tank, if they're a defender, if the rebel ally is a Jedi, if they are, right? And and I feel that we're entering an era with, with the game that that level of complexity is just starting to really compound. Uh, and I personally, my brain is not keeping up <laughs> why don't we let, let, let's skip topics and we'll come let's let's go sure. to three and come back to two how about that so let's talk about breaking okay. teams because I, th I think that's where you're going with that um yeah so yeah you know uh by breaking teams what what we're what we're talking about there is hey here's this here's this gl you know galactic legend leia kit and she's not going to break up the cls team and she's not going to break up the ewok team and she's not going to break up the phoenix team you know, so they have to put. That's why all these if thens exist to make sure she can only use yep. certain characters, and so that. And, and to me, um, I, I, I think we're going to be on the same page. I don't like that. You know, I, I just, uh, same. just, just make her like a rebel character that does good things. Maybe have a few, you know, categorizations in there, um, and and let us figure it out. You know, if if we got to break up the CLS team, this is how you know this is how the game worked for for a long time. You know, the the. The CLS team was not always what it is today. When it first came out, it was CLS with uh, Chirrut and Baze Malbus and R2 mm -hmm. and R2? GK, I think, was in there when it originally came out. It's been a long time, or Old Ben or something. Yeah, I think I was playing Old Ben when I was playing it. But yeah, yeah. It's, it's been, yeah, but then eventually that morphs. Then you add in Han down the road, then you add in Chewbacca, then Chupio comes in. But the team develops over time and pieces move in and out of that team. So let us figure mm -hmm. it out. Maybe this team works best with Mara Jade, you know, whatever. And it's obviously not, but, you know, as a community, this community, when we were able to do, when we were able to do a lot of the um, theory crafting, 
Yeah. There was a lot of fun in that. And, and and I think the last time that was really big, Proving Grounds kind of brings back some level of that, but that's once a month and only for a limited part of the audience. But um, the Heroic Sith Raid was like, was like theory crafting central. You know, you had Jedi right. Anakin yeah. in there with Slicker, Night Sisters. With yeah, so I think that's the last time any kind of theory crafting teams was important in this game, and they've really cut it off by all of the all of the if then statements we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And you know, I'd I'd like to caveat this too, real quick, and say that like while we're expressing some of our frustrations, I think the game is still fundamentally in an amazingly good place right now. Yes, uh, I I think it's in a very very good place, especially for newer players. But but you're right, and that that the opportunity for theory crafting I think is diminishing pretty quickly with each new uh squad or faction you know boosters that they're introducing like sanastaros you know it says uh rebel scoundrel non-scoundrel rebel tanks or something right i don't remember how that works or maybe no they have to be scoundrel rebel tanks right so you have three tag conditions on on her um and like uh nisa uh ha i think is doing amazing stuff with the ewok factions but when you read her kit it's unique from all the other Ewok kits in that it literally says over and over again, Ewok allies, Ewok ally, Ewok ally, Ewok. So I've had a bunch of questions on my Discord. People keep asking me like, well, what about C-3PO? What about C-3PO? And I'm like, well, sadly, C-3PO doesn't do a whole lot for Nisa because Nisa excludes him from all of her like passive abilities, like 10% health recovery, turn meter gain, and all kinds of other stuff. So it's, it's diminishing that theory crafting. And in terms of like CLS, how many years now has CLS been a go-to team? I think after four or five years, it's it's okay to give us the option to break it up, right? Yep. Yeah, I I just think that you know since Arnold is is the uh, part of the testing team, um, you know, I, I why not let the whole community just play with stuff? You know, put it all out there, and we can play with it, and we can put we'll put our own teams together. If it breaks yeah. up the CLS team, the CLS team becomes something different. You know, Chupio ends up with with Leia, and Lando ends up with Leia. Where well, Lando does, I guess maybe Son of Staros right now, but that's about it. Um, yeah, yeah. Let us let us uh, let us put together our best teams. Let us have the fun with it. But I mean, I kind of well, get I'm it on thinking... one hand because, like we were saying at the beginning, there's a reason that that some of these limitations are put on, and it's to keep the game alive and to keep the money pouring mm -hmm. in. But at the same time, I don't think that the whales, I don't think the absolute whales in the game, the ones that are unlocking Drogon with the, you know, 12, 12, 12 99 poles of crystals, those guys are still going to farm Drogon, whether or not um, it's an exact match in the team. Because once they have GLA on their team, they've got another toolbox, even if you take off half of the if-then statements that she's got on her. And I... I just think they need to open it up a little more and, and let us put let us put our own teams together and let us decide what's the best. Yeah, and, and I'll I'll really kind of hammer this down with so did you read the Leia Q and A? I did not get a chance to do that. It's uh yeah. So what's in the right. Leia Q I can pull it up here. Okay, so the second question on the Leia Q and A, um first one I don't I don't even know what it's talking about actually, but the second question uh, was was part of my fr big anger initially with the Leia kit. So like, you know, I've been speculating and hoping that Wicked would stand with with Gia Leia forever. And then we got the kit reveal, and and on the graphic, li literally Wicked is in the very center of the graphic between her name and Leia. So it's like they recognize the relationship there, and and then there's Chirpa in the background, almost as if he's you know waving goodbye. I have a theory about this, but I'm also probably just being wishful and naive. But then you scroll down and you look at the animations they provide throughout her kit, and you've got Nisa in pretty much all of them. So it's like they're advertising everywhere with a Wicket indoor Ewoks energy, and then never mentioning them again. And so in the Q&A, the very second question um, says, why is there no Ewok synergy? And Capital Games' response is to not break up the existing Ewok squad. Because, and I just because like, that's so meta, and we can't we can't touch that thing. We don't want that thing to break up. Right, right. So like, how many how many Kyber level players besides me and, and a niche group are honestly running 
uh, an Ewok squad? And the answer is probably less than 5%. Yeah. Okay. And then, and then how many mid-tier players are running a consistent Ewok squad? Again, maybe 10 to 15%. And then beginning levels, you definitely don't have Gialea. So it's irrelevant, right? So that, that entire sentence of we don't want to break up an Ewok squad, not to mention the fact that there's eight Ewoks now, is just asinine, if I can say that. I don't pronounce it okay, I guess. It, it's a ridiculous situation. There are eight of them. So, you know, even if you're in 3v3 and you're running a, a, a Tebow lead and a, and a Chirpa lead, you still have two sitting on the sideline. Right. So... I agree, with you, man. You know, and it's the same thing when I look at fleets, and you know, we've got mm -hmm. three Empire capital ships now. One of them is, is used with bounty hunters, but you know, uh, the original three capital ships are just on the sidelines now. If you farm all the ships, so can we find ways to you yeah. know, give us? Um, I don't know, give us more ships to use. But, but when they come up with more ships, are going to come up with more capital ships. So you know, there's just so much sitting on the sidelines. It's what I like. I look at a roster, and I do a roster view, and I say. You got all this stuff. So you're you're going after Star Killer, but you've got a, you know, a Gear Eleven CLS team sitting here. Just fix your CLS team. You know, don't go yeah. get the next shiny stuff. So they got us so much stuff sitting in the game. I mean, what are we gonna use Ugnot? I want. To, <laughs> let's get some Ugnot <laughs> Lobot Lando synergy going, man. Let's have that happen. That would be pretty cool. It, it, yeah, and see, and, and therein lies another. Uh, kind of a, a missed opportunity was was Lobot not having any synergies with Lando. Um, yeah, uh, I just I, feel that was a really missed opportunity. I, I think there's two things there, and I agree with that 100. percent I've always wanted them to have more synergies with with different characters like Lobot, Lando, uh, Han, and Leia. You know, I mean, they got you know Han and Chewie have synergy. Um, like Biggs and Wedge have synergy, whatever. There should be more mm -hmm. of that, and more of that should be happening in the game. There should be a lot yes. more of that in the game. And then somebody, one of my you streams know. brought up one time, and I like this too. Hey, why not, if you're using Jedi Knight Luke against a Darth Vader team, on the chance that that happens, when Luke beats Darth Vader, there's a graphic, you know? Why not put something like that in the game too, where it just gives somebody an extra little drive to... to like when you use... If you use... Um, whatever home one against executor which you know whatever you wouldn't do it but you know there's there's an end graphic of of akbar saying it's a trap and then he puts his head down and you know so i just i i think there's that one doesn't make any sense but you know what i'm saying i think no, they I, should... I know exactly i get it yeah yeah there's there's so many opportunities for cutscenes in there and and some of them are already in the game like in the marquees you know like I, i've heard Arnold say a hundred times that he wishes all marquees were just open so that new players could at least play them and and see that have that experience and i agree i mean if you're not going to at least open it then embed those animations into the game somewhere where we can enjoy them yeah because i mean it, the it, game it really helps yeah i mean I, I like, like you know just imagine the random encounter that somebody puts a you know an r2d2 or like a, a um say like a, a chopper in there they've never watched rebels for example but they put chopper in there and chopper kills a droid and then it does a little cutscene from the rebel show where he pushes little droids off a cliff or something right that would just be random happiness random joy right in the in the, the player and that gets you going for more and talking about it online and trying to share how do i recreate that and yeah good stuff yeah I agree with that. You know, the journeys put so much in there. When I did the Jedi Knight Luke journey, it was, it was shortly after my father died, and just going through those Empire Strikes Back scenes was really emotional for me. Like, actually, it it it, it uh, pulled an emotional, physical response out of me. And I think if there was more of that in the game, it would be a motivation. I think it would it would. It's been eight years since the game launched, and they've come a long way with like the the PFPs for the characters, right? They're you know they're they're making that effort. I don't know about Thrawn, but everybody else looks good. Um, but yeah. they um why not Let, let's put let's get more graphics into the game and i don't know i don't know if they're ever going to do it or not but i think it's a i think that's a great idea cut scenes in the middle of gameplay would be tremendous we'll see if they ever allow us to have that i know a lot of people would say oh the battles already take too long i don't want it but it would also be really easy to put a switch in the settings you know disable cut scenes you know enable yeah. it for people who want it disable it for people who don't but back to the whole capital gains kind of starting to dictate how teams work i was thinking long about like should i break up my cls in spite of them saying they don't want us to break it up right and i was thinking like 
okay, okay, what can we do with this? So tell me if you think this is a, a viable strategy. So I don't have Seer yet. I mean, I, I've got her like five stars maybe, but I came across a Seer team in, in GAC that just obliterated, uh, what squad was I running? Oh, it was my Phoenix squad with, with Captain Rex and the Rexicon. I did nothing to Seer. It was, it was, I had it on full auto, four minutes in, they still had max health protection and bonus protection. And I was like, what is going on? So then I started reading the kits. I realized they're all unaligned force users. And I was like, hey, I think, what does CLS work in there? He's an unaligned force user. And then I got thinking, okay, well then where would Han Solo Chewie go? And I was thinking, well, Dash seems logical. And then C-3PO can go anywhere. And then while he's not a rebel fighter, Chupio works really well with the rebel fighters because he still assists every attack and then shares out, you know, health and everything from Mon Mothma. Despite her not having attack, she still has an offensive value. Part of that gets shared. So what do you think of that? I love it. I, you know what? I think that's tremendous. I, you know, I, mm -hmm. I agree. Han Solo and Chewie do show up on those Dash Rendar teams. Yeah. CLS on a Seer team. I mean, why not? Why not? I mean, I mean at mean, least try this stuff out. Let's let's see what's out yeah. there, and then you can force. So it sounds like you're putting uh, Chewbacca and three PO on the on the on the Leia team, or no, maybe just three PO on the Leia team. Why not? I mean, even though they disable his health pool sharing, he's still got a, an AOE blind. He's still got uh, ramping offense. He still assists every turn. And, and I think when I do get Leia unlocked, I'm going to stick Wicket there anyway. I don't care. <laughs> Win or lose, I'm playing it lore accurate. All right, now let's talk about that then. Does lore matter? And I'm going to leave it. I'm going to let this. Uh, you can run with this. I know this is, you know, a, a precious topic to you. So does the lore matter? It matters a lot to me. And and I've, I've chatted with enough people that I find that I, I think I'm in the minority. I love the theory crafting uh, and I love the opportunity to mix and match and I think that's how the game should be. But I also feel that when characters are introduced to the game, they should be thematically lore accurate and then allow the character base to theory craft and find the most optimal use out of it. But like, I'm an old Magic the Gathering fan, like, did you ever play Magic? It that is not my game, man. I my my ah. boys play it, and mm. to me, there's too much variance in it, and I gotta I gotta I, there's too much walking across the table to read the other guy's card, <laughs> and I you know yeah. to me like I love Dominion is a card game that I do love, where okay. I don't know if you ever play that, mm. um and, and there is some variance, but there's some variance within a, a deck, and there's and there's less card, and there's only um eight to ten cards on the table at a time. And you're mm -hmm. so as opposed to with magic, you're playing with, you know, you could, if oh, you've got okay. four or five players, you could have 700 cards that are, you're dealing with different yeah, types it gets, of cards. It gets crazy. There are tens of thousands of cards now in the game. But what, what I love about the game, even still to this day, which it, it came out in 1993 uh, and they crank out a thousand new cards, I swear, every year. But what I love about the game is that every set that they introduce is very thematic to to some thing and there's consistency in like the 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 white cards typically have a lot of angels and animals like lions and things and then the black cards will have vampires and, and what skeletons and stuff and it's very consistent yet when you start to to play it with your friends and at tournaments you start to learn how to interact with them in ways that maybe were intentional maybe not and rarely does the developer come back and go, ooh, our bad, now you can't do that. I mean, they do from time to time, but it's very, very rare. Um, and that's what I would love to see this game head towards. Like, I, I, I really felt that they were moving that direction with the crate raid thematics, the new, the Tuscan warrior chieftain to finish off that squad of five, um, you know, Nisa to, to, to bolster the Ewoks. And then we got the recommendation of old Ben and Kanan. And I think a lot of people are saying, no, that's not the right way to go anyway. But it was like Kanan and old Ben, they're both dead by Endor. If you didn't know that, sorry. Um, but I was just like, no. And then uh, in my guild, there's a lot of discussion right now about Leviathan yeah. in a mirror yeah. match, running Darth Vader as your first reinforcement. And I'm like, Darth Vader 
with a Sith Empire fleet. Uh, that's like Maul and Lord Vader. It's just... Well, but then if we're talking about being able to mix and match your own teams, then you wouldn't be able to really control all of that, right? Like, if Darth Vader is... And I don't know. I mean, that's the first I've heard of it. But if Darth Vader is the best first reinforcement, then why not? So, yeah, actually, and that's contrary to my previous statement. That That's theory crafting. <laughs> I like that. Sorry, I was thinking uh, initially Darth Maul, right? Who was advertised... I think as a synergizing character with with Leviathan when it was announced. I could be mistaken on that, but Darth Maul, I, I see a lot of people running as a first reinforcement, and I, I thought that was a CG recommendation. Am I wrong on that one? I really don't remember, but that would make sense to me. I can look up the Leviathan graphic here, so we got it up. We, um, yeah, see I'll look it up. I, I'm pretty sure it was. I don't recall, but yeah, I just I would love to see lore accurate releases. And then let the community do its magic. Oh, so yeah, they've started these new release graphics where it just says Dark Side Cat. Like, it, it's not uh, showing the the uh, what is the synergy characters anymore on these releases. Oh, you mean it doesn't have Kenobi there, huh? So I'm well, I'm looking at the Leviathan, I, I, and this is just a Google search, but. The original video, it's just got like a big thing. It says Capital Ship Leviathan, Dark Side, Sith Empire, commanded by Darth Revan. But they are no longer issuing the the uh, big images like with Fury Class Interceptor, where it says Synergy B twenty eight Extinction Bomber Scimitar. So Scimitar was recommended with the Fury Class Interceptor, okay. along with the B twenty eight, which is Sith Marauder, and Sith Fighter, which is Sith Assassin. So that's right. might be so that, thinking of that. That's old. Yeah, that's the old Sith Empire. Yep. Yeah, with Maul. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know. Um, it, it doesn't bother me either. So, it, will it be lore accurate? I kind of like the idea of using um, Jar Jar Binks on a Galactic Legend Leia team if it works. You know, I kind of, I kind of like okay. the the mix and match, and I, I like both of it. All right, like I like the fact that Biggs and Wedge work together and they have synergy. I like, I love the fact that Han and Chewie's kit works together. Right, you don't want to split them up. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really, really important. But I also like the fact that maybe I throw Darth Sidious into a uh, Sith Empire team or something. You know, you don't. I'm just, you know, but I, I like the idea of being able to miss. So I, I kind of like both sides of that. So I'm going to say yes and no. Does lore matter? Yes. And it also no. So, you know. I, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm trying to let go of my personal anti lore action grudges i guess somebody asked me how do you like your cls team and i was like oh great example and they were like yeah so having two chewbacca's and two t3po's is lore accurate and i was like hang on no yeah I we can't break that. that up we can't we don't want to have a kit where luke works with 3po han chewy and then old ben why would we want to do that you know because old ben <laughs> wouldn't just fit right in there <laughs> Anyway, um, all right, let's talk about so Ahsoka characters. We were looking at Ahsoka, and I have not yeah. seen episode six, by the way, so if you saw it, no spoilers. I'm trying to think of what the last one, I think I have not either. That That's the one that just came out, like, today, yesterday? Correct, correct. Yeah, I haven't seen it yet. Okay, so we were going to talk about what Ahsoka characters we think might be coming to the game. Um, I did see a thumbnail from AP, and I didn't watch the video. It looked like maybe he thought we might be getting a Galactic Legend Thrawn down the road, which I'm not sure I agree with that, necessarily. I think that that's possible, but I would be surprised. Because I think if they did a Galactic Legend Thrawn, it almost inevitably means we would need a Galactic Legend Ahsoka counterpart. Even though they say they're not doing counterparts, you know, Leia and and Jabba sort of are counterparts yes. in the sense that they're in the same movie and she killed him. Yes. Right. One was a good guy. One was a bad guy. He enslaved um, her and she killed him. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There, there's a small connection there. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I, I feel like if they did Thrawn, they, they almost are dedicating, you know, something to the Ahsoka show, which while Ahsoka is a I think it's a great I think it's a, a, a hit right now, a success. Uh, I haven't looked at the numbers, but I'm loving it. And pretty much everybody I talk to says they really are enjoying it. I know I know you had some early issues with it. How are you liking it now? I liked episode uh, I liked episode four, which we talked about last time. Um, mm -hmm. you know, there was it, there was the uh, the action in the show drove the story forward. There was always something going on. There, you know, there's some little things to quibble with, but I liked episode four. Episode five, 
I said was fine, but there's just a lot of holes there. Um, I really don't understand people and people are arguing with me and that's fine. I, 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 I've got a lot to say about it and, and maybe I, I don't know if I want to get into it here, but I have a lot to say. I, I think that uh, the Ahsoka show being basically Rebels season six or whatever, whatever it is, is is turning Star Wars into this niche product that's appealing to existing Star Wars fans and not pulling in new people. And I I, th- I really don't like that. You know, to me, Star Wars growing up was were blockbuster movies that everybody on the whole planet watched. I mean, and it became a, a cultural event. I mean, the original Star Wars trilogy and even the prequels are cultural phenomenons. And yeah, the, the Star Wars that. content we're getting now is very niche and very drilled in. And it makes me feel like we're in it. We're in that Star Trek is in the spot where Star, or Star, excuse me, Star Wars is in the spot where Star Trek was in the 80s. Where it's, and and mm-hmm. Star Trek kind of bounced out of it with Next Generation. But then they went right back to it with their shows after that. So I yeah. feel like I want Star Wars to be to be this big global thing where they're telling great stories. And I think right now the stories appeal to people that already know and understand and love the, the existing stories, if that makes any sense. No, it makes perfect sense. And I think you've just shined some light on some perspective I hadn't considered. Um, I'll share with you though that, um, so I, I'm a teacher and I teach predominantly grades eight and nine, but I have a lot of interaction with students of all ages. and especially here in Shanghai and China, which is the biggest market in the world, the the exposure to Star Wars is very, very, very limited. I mean, they love Disney here, but there's it's rare to come across anything Star Wars-y. But I will say that I have had more students in the last six months ask me how I like Ahsoka. Not six months, last six weeks, than I have probably in the last six years how I like anything Star Wars. So I, I would, I do feel that at least in my small community, the Ahsoka show is growing the audience in the younger generation a little bit. Now I would love to know if there's data on that, like the rest of the world, I have no idea. That's just my own anecdotal evidence. But like I had a student just today stop me in the hallway and he's like, oh, hey, did you see Ahsoka latest show? What did you think? And I'm like, spoiler, right? So, hey, uh, I, yeah, that's a good sign. Maybe it is. Maybe it really is, you know, and uh, may, I could be completely wrong about it. I just, I still, still the show for me has a lot of standing around and talking and I'm just not a fan of that. Um, well, I mean, you are right in that, you know, the, the movies, especially in the, when the originals came out, that was absolutely a phenomenon that took the world by storm. And I mean, it created, there was already sci-fi, you know, Star Trek predated it and other things, but it made sci-fi mainstream right yeah. it made science fiction cool for everybody um and even 20 years after the the third movie it was still cool for everybody and there were still star wars toys on the shelves right yeah and and you know i i i bought this summer i bought eight or nine maybe more uh hasbro D- black series star wars toys because i just thought they were cool and then I realized I don't need them. I'm just buying them for the heck of them. So I started looking into the, the collectors and, and I found that these are being bought more and more and more by people my age and not by kids. And I was like, oh, that doesn't bode well for the future. So I am curious. Oh, I'm going to have yeah. to think on what you said. But moving forward, who do you want from the game or in I, the game? I think we've got to get Balin's got to be a character. And, and I don't know the blonde girl's name. I, I don't know her name. Um, Chin. Okay. Yeah. And then, S-H-I-N. I don't know about the night sister lady because she's never done anything night sistery. Maybe there's there's something like I really felt like it, this is what I feel like if we're gonna rewrite the first episode that opening scene when they come on the ship that they should have been really urgent to get her out because maybe there were like a thousand rebels on the on in the the hangar. Balin said, "I'll hold them off. You go get her out." They get her out. She comes in the hangar and just night sister, you know, green fog over the whole thing. I feel like they should they should do, be doing more with that. Like she's, like Balin clearly has some level of fear and respect for her. We've yes. seen no reason why that should be true at all. Like you know yeah, what I'm saying? Even in uh, was it Mandalorian or Book of Boba Fett where she had her other appearance? I think it was Mandalorian, right? Oh, I don't know. I don't remember her. Was she in Mandalorian? Wait, wasn't she the woman that Ahsoka fought and stole? No, it wasn't. Yeah, took they, they had the fight. She had the uh, the Beskar spear. Oh, 
I don't think so. I, I could totally be wrong, but I thought that that was the woman that Ahsoka captured, and then this is now Balin rescuing her after her capture. I'm looking up the Ahsoka show cast, so we'll look it up. Um, I don't think that's who it is, but I could be wrong. Hmm. So that's okay. I've been but wrong I, before. You're right. I want to know what she can do. <laughs> but I have to say, I love the character Balin Skull. I think he is really awesome, and it's it's so sad that we lost Ray Stevenson. To, that he can't. Yeah, he it's can't really a shame because you know reception. I've seen it point out that he's like this samurai. He's like a Jedi samurai, and his character is. It, it seems like there's a lot of depth there that we don't know because he clearly doesn't just hate the Jedi, right? Um, mm -hmm. And he's not, he's clearly not com a complete Sith, and yet he sees something that needs to be done and he's going to get it done. So I don't know yeah. if they'll, they'll try to find a way to recast that and put somebody else in there, you know, pull a Dumbledore on us. Um, no, yeah, yeah. Yeah, which to me, if he's really important to the show, I, you know, maybe that's what you do. You know, like when Carrie Fisher passed, you cannot recast Carrie Fisher. There's no. just no way to do it. But it's early enough that I think if they, you know, go grab Keanu Reeves. Let's put Keanu Reeves in there. I think everybody would be happy with that. <laughs> so, but, um, yeah, I don't I don't see her be, I don't, uh, so I pulled up her, oh, I, everybody can see it on the screen, sorry. I pulled up her IMDb and movies and TV shows she's been in, and, and there's nothing else Star Wars on here, so I don't think that was who that was. Hmm. Well, I need to go back and rewatch that yeah. thing. Yeah. But... Um, but yeah, I will. I want to. I want to see what what makes Morgan so awesome. But yeah, yeah, I, I agree with that. And then you could add another Night Sister character. Then we're slowly expanding to two Night Sister teams, which could be really interesting. And of course, they'll have specifics in there. So she works with Initiate and Acolyte, and they actually become useful characters. You know what I mean? So. And then they'll give us another like Separatist GL that does not work with Night Sisters because they don't want to break up the team. <laughs> but, okay, so uh, according to Wikipedia, Morgan Elspeth's. Um, was in The Mandalorian, season two, junior novel, graphic novel, and then the TV show, chapter 13, The Jedi. Was it the same woman playing her? That, that's what I'm trying to find out right now. Um, who's the actress? Diana Lee, yes, it is. Guest star Diana Lee Inosanto in uh, chapter 13, The Jedi. So that was the... Okay, that was her then. Okay, I'm pulling up a picture, right? Okay, that was her. All right. Yeah, yeah. So, so they she didn't was... mention the Night Sister thing at all. No, she did no Night Sister stuff when she was captured. So, don't know. So here's who I want. Um, if I were to, to like pull names out of, uh, th th there's actually a lot that I want from the Ahsoka show, but my number one pick, just because I think it would be a whole lot of fun, and would synergize with. Lobot of all people, <laughs> I want Hu Yang. I agree. The droid. I, I, I just love his character. You know, when S Sabine says something like, I'm not good enough, and he just turns to her and says, That is right. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> and, I, and he's right. She's I, not. She. <laughs> yeah, I, I love Sabine, but I don't like, I, I don't really buy into the whole Jedi thing. I, I, I I, I'm not buying this whole thing that everybody has the force now. Like Hera has, apparently Hera has more force sensitivity, sensitivity than Sabine does because Hera can hear them in the world beyond worlds or whatever it is. Um, mm. I, 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 that, a little, I'm a little sarcastic there, but yeah, you know, I agree with, I agree with there, I, with you on that. I mean, there's, why don't they put, uh, what's his name? The X-Wing pilot. He needs to come to the game. You know, he's been in, he's been in multiple yeah. series now. Um, Captain Carson Tiva. Yeah. And no, exactly. I don't yeah. know this. I have it pulled up on another screen there to see go. all the characters here. But, but you're going to yeah. get... No, so I whatever happens them. with Sabine, I, I tend to think that Sabine's probably going to turn to the dark side at some point here. They're kind of setting that up. So at some point, you'll probably get a Sabine, you know, like a dark side Sabine, um, mm -hmm. which doesn't make any sense because she, does, she, can't use, she can't use the Force. All right. So but separately... Um, or maybe... We get Sabine Wren unmasked. Uh, <laughs> there you go. We get um, but Ezra yeah, I mean, Bridger, there, there's, you get those. Fallen. You get the three bad guys. You could get a new Thrawn. But let me let's talk a little bit more. So let, let's. I mean, did you have something else to say? Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh no, it's okay. Go for it. Go for it. I was kind of going to go to the next to the next comment, the next journey character, but also kind of talk about our next GL. Mm -hmm. You know, we always talk about that with an, so next journey character, next GL. 
Factions that are missing, and I forgot to put this in there, but factions that are missing a GL right now, like there's a there's a ton of scoundrels and no GL. Um, Ewok. We have E. <laughs> Who do you want for your GL? Ewok GL. Okay, actually, I, I laugh. I laugh at that, but but hang on now. What would Star Wars be without all the niche niche factions? Like without Tuscans, without Ewoks, without um, the Pikes, right? Star Wars, it wouldn't be there. Like Star Wars is the diversity of aliens and everything. And the way that the the Leia, not to backtrack, the way that they said specifically in her QA, also we wanted her to be a Rebel GL. Makes me worry we're not going to have niche faction synergies like almost ever because otherwise we would need a by that logic we would need a Tuscan GL and that doesn't make sense or an Ugnot GL that doesn't make sense so I laugh but yeah so anyway who who are you thinking do you have a a, a ponderance to share well I, I mean I'm looking at it and and we could use you know a scoundrel GL which to me screams uh, Mando movie. Mando, mm -hmm. you know, that, that final Beskar Mando. Although in the last series, you know, it, we learned that he's not even the Mandalorian, apparently. Uh, you know, whatever. Bo-Katan. Yeah, so um, you could maybe have a Bo-Katan GL that's ahead of the Scoundrels, you know, something like that. Yeah. Um, we're also missing you know, that Separatist GL, you know, so uh -huh. I think, I wonder if we get a light side Scoundrel and a, and a dark side Separatist GL as our new, next two GLs. And I also kind of wonder, as we fill up these big factions, because that takes care... I don't think there's many big factions left, unless we add a bunch of clones here all of a sudden, that I think that might end the GL, then maybe we turn to some kind of new thing in the game, you know, down, you know, a couple of years from now, that there's some kind of new release, the 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 Super Universal GL player. or the external <laughs> GL, or I don't know what it would be. So I'm trying to think. Um, we have eight GLs now. Kenobi is... Jedi, is he also, he is Galactic Republic, right? Yes, he is. Yeah. yeah. But Luke is not Resistance, but Rey is. Luke is just Jedi. Right, so we've got Jabba the Hutt. It covers your, um, is he a scoundrel yeah. though? But he doesn't really have. He's no, a he's, bounty hunter. He's not a scoundrel. No, he's a so bounty he's hunter. So he's a bounty hunter. Then we've got um, Kenobi, who is Galactic Republic. We got Luke, who's Jedi, which Jedi in the game are mostly Galactic Republic. Um, there are some Jedi, you know, like Hoda and Jedi Knight Luke that he goes with. Uh, mm -hmm. Leia's the Rebel. Lord Vader's the Empire. So that's why I don't think there's going to be... That's why when you say Thrawn GL, I just don't see it because there's already... Unless we have... No. Unless we go to this other galaxy and we establish a whole other thing. And so he is like... Although there is some... I mean, I could, I could almost see that, especially with the Dark armor Gideon coming yeah um, because that that sets a big paywall if you don't get him then he becomes a uh, proving grounds character makes it really hard for a lot of people to get and it's you know he's an imperial remnant which is what Thrawn would be so like I can see the logic behind that to an extent the the other issue though that I have with it is that CG tends not to throw out high prestige like galactic legend level characters until the character is kind of fleshed out a lot in cinema um and the mandalorian i think like we're, we're going into season four i guess I'm, I'm not sure right season four uh and like like you just pointed out we don't really know if the mandalorian is is bo katan or the Mando or Mando, right? Right. So we don't really know where Ahsoka's going yet. Um, we may only see Thrawn in flashbacks for a moment. Who knows where that's happening? So yeah, I don't see that happening. I will give a bit of a spoiler though, um, and, and I plan to do a, a, a vid about this soon, but not not a galactic legend. But in January, we always get a a journey guide legendary character. So two years ago, we got Grand Inquisitor. This year, I think it was Dr. Afra. So I think, I don't know who, but I, I think I know what faction and maybe which four or five people are coming this January. Do you want to share? share? You save it for your video. I don't, do you want to get no, into no, it? I don't mind. I'll share this one because I got a bigger plot that I'm thinking down the line. But I think that in January, it's going to be a Jedi Council member from Phantom Menace. Um... 
Uh, that wouldn't surprise. I, I feel like next year is the Phantom Menace year, right? Because yep. we have no character. I've, we talked about it on here. I've, I've talked about it. Hundred percent. I think you, I think you are a hundred percent onto it right there. That yep. Phantom and Menace is way underrepresented in this game. It's it's Qui Gon so, and Darth Maul and hit the road. I think. Yeah. No. There's almost no one. So if you were to like ask the gen- like if you if you stopped a hundred people and you asked them and they were all self-proclaimed fans of Star Wars and you asked those hundred people how many of you know who Dr. Aphra is I would wager honestly less than 5% no I agree same with Grand Inquisitor no idea so the January Journey Guide legendary character seems to be niche characters that have a, a devout following or a, a love in, in a small group but not mainstream like a galactic legend so my thinking is January, which also next year, I think it's, is it the 25th anniversary of Phantom Menace? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's yeah. like, I think it's 25 it is, years. It is. So this year was the 40th of Return of the Jedi, and we got Leia. Right. So they do like anniversaries. So I think it's going to be Phantom Menace year, and I think they're going to launch it, uh, the, the legendary character. I think it's going to be a Jedi Council member, um, or I think it will be Jar Jar. I, I think those are two really good on. And then so, you, so you'd have like one of them at the beginning of the year, then you'd have one later. You know, you get your, your Dr. Aphra at the beginning of the year, then you get your Cal Kestis later. So you get um, you get your, uh, I don't know, new Mace Windu or whatever that you get in January. And then you get your uh, Jar Jar, you know, in July. And then in September, you get Bes- you get uh, Beskar Mando or whatever, you know, Galactic Legend or mm-hmm. or uh, your Separatist Galactic, you know, a new Grievous Separatist Galactic Legend or, or a new Sidious, whatever it is, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and as far as the Jedi go, I'm, I'm thinking it's going to be one of two characters. I think it's going to be Yaddle, who would be truly awesome. I know, again, most people don't know who Yaddle is, but uh, Yaddle was on the character. I think it's the only other... Yoda-like species character we've seen. Um, Grogu. Besides, yeah, Grogu, right? Who came uh, most recently. And then the other one, and I have no idea how to say the name right. Uh, Sasi or Sasi Ten? Do you know this one? No. Yeah, S A S E E T I I N. As soon as you see the picture, you'll be like, "Oh, I know that character," but no one knows the name. Like I said, I have no idea how to say it. Did you mean Sassy Tin? Oh, this guy. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. See, you're like, oh, this guy. Yep. And then throughout the year, I also, yeah, I, I would expect to see him to uh, to start bringing in some some Nubian characters, maybe some more Separatist characters. Uh, and then if we're really lucky, honestly, like if they did a legendary Jar Jar, uh, then you, we could get a whole Gungan faction or Nubian faction. And I, and I like, we need it. It should be there. Whether you love or hate the characters, they're there. They're part of Star Wars. Yeah, and then your Separatist GL makes 100% sense, doesn't it? it just fits yep. right in there. Uh-huh. Oh, man, I and like so, it. The, wait, and, I, the and Separatist I, GL would be Hologram uh, Sidious is what it would be. That would be your Separatist. So you got Sith <laughs> Eternal and Hologram Sidious. You got all these... <laughs> you got the, the Hologram just keeps summoning minions to die. <laughs> Go kill them. Oh, dang it. Another one. But yeah, so so I also have ideas on the the next like capital ships. Um, I think I know who the next two are. Uh, of course, you know I'm probably wrong. You know it's, this stuff all changes on a whim as soon as CG feels like it. But um, I, I'm not going to spoil n- next summers. But I think two summers from now it will be a separatist ship, and I think Trench will be the 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 commander. Do you th- will it um, will it be the big circle ship or will it be um, I don't oh. know what, I don't know what Trench captains. I don't know what trench captions either. I, I haven't seen Blasphemy, I know, but I haven't seen all of, of the Clone Wars yet. I'm slowly working my way through it. Well, but I think every you may character... have heard it here first. You know, Yaddle or Sassy10 is uh, coming to the game, says Gerbil. Mark it down. Yeah, no, no, it's uh, he's predicting 100%. Um, I, 100% plus or minus 95. I think that I think that's a tremendous uh, assessment of what may happen. So let's so let's look at our last thing here, 
rework and oh, yeah. touch ups. Or did you have something else to say on that? You look like you might have. Okay. Let's hit the reworks. Okay. So rework and touch up. So there's rumors about Darth Vader, and there was some rumors about somebody else as well. And I can't remember who it was. Nah, don't see that happening. I I think Darth Vader could use a buff um, because right now he's usable in small stints. He's very great early and mid, and yeah. then he just kind of fades off, um, yeah. which is similar to how he was originally before he got Merciless Massacre. But, you know, with the great nerf of 2020, he's never fully recovered from that. Um, no. But I just, you know, they did the Lobot rework, and that's the first rework we've had in years, and I just don't see him doing yeah. a lot of reworks. Reworks are really, really uncommon, right? We got a Mace Windu rework a couple years ago. Um, we got the Lobot touch-up. I'm very, very hopeful we'll get more, um, and and I have some I have some hopes on that. Like especially with like the crate raid, I think it became real apparent like what the Jawas' biggest flaw is. I mean, obviously they got a lot of flaws, but they have no way at all of removing debuff or buffs. I think from the enemy. So like when when uh, the crate gets offense up, you're just yep. kind of like, uh oh, <laughs> you're in trouble. Um, but yeah, I you know I think I think Darth Vader would be fantastic with a wampa style omicron and i think that that could happen rather than a rework they give him a, an omicron ability and i think that that's why they introduced omicrons but you know we haven't had many legacy characters getting omicrons lately it feels like all of the omicrons are coming to new characters yeah i yeah like they'll give the new character three or four omicrons um you know just to make you get more omicrons yeah and i i agree with that i i, I would love to see more omicrons and he's Clearly, Omicrons and Datacrons were brought out as an alternative to reworks. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't know the amount of work that it goes in for the development team. Um, and you, you can't monetize a rework on Darth Vader at all. Um, no, not really. Yeah, so unless they find a way to do it, I, I, I guess you... I, I don't know. I don't know how you would monetize a rework of Darth Vader. And, um, you know, the income for the game is not... It's certainly not bad. The game's making like $7 million a month right now. Whereas a couple years ago, it was probably it was making more like you know ten million dollars a month, ten or twelve, mm -hmm. thirteen. So the income of the game is down a little bit, but I I, I don't know where I'm going with this. I, so reworks. <laughs> well, I think that reworks do incentivize legacy characters. That you know, as as the player base shifts, older players retire, newer players come in, and a newer, younger player might look at their roster and say, well, like, what's the purpose of having? Uh, Imperial tro probe droid. Why, why would I want to gear up Gar Saxon or Darth Sidious? And yeah, maybe they're needed for a GL here or there, but especially with eight and likely nine next year GLs, those newer players don't have much incentive for it. So I think that reworks and touch-ups is a great way for them to to push that energy back up and that attention to them. So like if I were picking characters, I would really, really love to see reworked or touched up. Uh, I would love to see a, a Gar Saxon touch up that makes him more viable with Mandalorians, um, especially with the Super Commando, Imperial Super Commando. Um, I would love to see some of the other Jedi's. There's so many Jedi just sitting on the bench, like yep. Luminara, Eeth uh, Koth, Kit Fisto, I'm a Gundy, right? There's there's a lot of Jedi just sitting there, and it it just it's kind of like uh, why. And mine are pretty much all gear 12, too, so. <laughs> but you're right. I mean, uh, yeah, everything you just said is true. And there's a lot. Uh, there's probably 50 to 60 characters in this game that don't get used by anybody at any point for anything. And it mm -hmm. leaves it, it get, the good thing about that is there's a lot of opportunity. You know, there's a lot of opportunity to to for the them to build those characters in the game and bring them up or put an Omicron. Hey man, people were not using Wampa at all, like ever, for anything. I was one of the few that, that tried her out early on in Grand Arena and had some success, you know, with the, it was like Thrawn, Wampa, Rex. I was playing around with it um, back during, because I didn't want to unlock uh, Gen Darth Revan, basically. Um, but, um, you know, until that, when that Omicron came out, all of a sudden, everybody, Wampa's like a priority now for <laughs> every early Top right. Of the chart. Yeah, mm -hmm. Wampa generates crystal income in Grand Arena. And there's Savage yeah. Press. So Savage Press was a meta when he first got his Zeta, and then it just faded fast, and, and nobody touched Savage Press for years. And boom, Omicron. Now, again, Savage is a priority farm for new yeah. or returning characters. 
It, yeah, Savage, another one character tune. I mean, like it, he can beat many teams by himself. Yep. So, yeah, it, the 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 one character. Like if I if I could drop two hundred dollars right now in, in, for a re a retouch, the one I would do. And then this again, this is go back to my Ewok nuttiness, but it would be a simple one line addition to Wicket that simply said like if GLA one of those if then conditions that we love. But if GLA was in the leader spot, then Wicked gains the Rebel tag and replace all instances of Ewok in his kit with Rebel. I, and then, honestly, the Ewoks work tightly with the Rebels the same way that Rex worked yeah. tightly with the Phoenix. Um, you know, yeah. Um, so yeah, that wouldn't bother me at all. So good luck with that. You should uh, you should call Capital Games and yeah, it's not happening. No, it's not happening. <laughs> not happening. All right, man. Uh, <laughs> this is I, this is great. You know. I love. I, I'm always. I'm into the Yaddle and Sassy Ten prediction that you just dropped on us. So uh, that'll be. I, I, I think Yaddle would be fantastic. And Yaddle was a pilot, so a potential ship down the road. Um, Yaddle was was uh, an expert fighter. You yeah. do know who killed Yaddle, right? Well, Dooku killed her in the yeah. uh, in the uh, what's what's that show called? Uh, that that was that was uh, Clone Wars, wasn't it? I'm no, sure it, was it was it was uh, a That's short cool. series on Disney. Oh right, right. Tales, uh, not visions. Uh, uh, Tales, Tales of the Jedi. That sounds right. Which, I, 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 I think like that. that's right. I think that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's where we saw it. Because I was, I remembered it was Dooku, and I was trying to place it. But yeah, that was a again spoiler. Sorry, folks. I mean, most people don't even know who Yaddle is, but. Uh, that was that was kind of an emotional scene there because for years and years Yaddle has been a mystery, right? She's in the council in this in the prequel movies. You see her, but I don't I don't recall if she had any speaking lines. And most people were like, "Who is that? Is that you know Yoda's wife?" No one knew really. She just wasn't in much other content. And then we got a lot of her in that that series. Yeah. And then she died. Oh well. Everybody dies, man. No, they don't. I'm gonna live forever. Well, if you're and if you're in Star Wars and you die, they just bring you back with bionic legs or a big, huge hmm. thing on your back. I don't know. Or I taught myself to be a Force ghost, right? Oh, good job. Ghost. Good force job. Force ghost. Yeah. 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 That's it. All right. Any any uh, as we get to the end here, Mister Gerbil, sir. Any uh, any parting words or final words of wisdom for us? Oh man, if you ever drop your keys in a river of molten lava, let them go. Cause man, they're gone. They're gone. They're gone. I actually have a story about dropping keys in a river one time, but that's a separate, <laughs> separate key. It was not molten lava though. It was not molten lava. Oh, okay. Well, they might still be there then. Yeah. I think that's really good advice. Um, yeah. Thank you. I got to hand it to you. I, I think they're, I think they're like gone instantaneously when they hit the lava. I think that's it. Yeah, probably. I'm not going to try to find out. I think probably if you got your keys close to the lava, they're done. You know, the closest connection I have to lava, this is a true story. My grandparents, you know, they lived in Oklahoma. They bought two acres of land in Hawaii, sight unseen, used it as an excuse to fly out to visit Hawaii, had a great vacation, came home, and I was like, hey, how was the land? And they said, don't know, cut off by a lava flow. We're putting it up for sale. <laughs> I have no idea what to do with that, and so we're going to end this <laughs> by saying... Thanks for joining, everybody. Have a great day. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. And always remember, Nooch and Gerbil are too good.